The Five Nights at Freddy's movie is nearly upon us. By the time you're watching this, you very well may have already seen it, and this is a part of your ritual post-movie viewing experience alongside New Rockstar and Screen Crush, which I have to say, I'm honored. But let's dispense with the long-winded intro setting up some joke that won't pay off for another 16 minutes, and let's get to the question at hand. The animatronics, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Freddy Fazbear himself, how do they work? And I don't mean from a lore perspective, in that case it would be some vague ghost-related plot device, I think. No, I mean how did the filmmakers get these things to work on screen? Because despite what a lot of us initially assumed, according to the film's director, there were no CGI animatronics in the whole movie. They were all done practically. But how did they accomplish this? Did they follow in the footsteps of the very villain they're trying to bring to life and create their own spring lock suits? Did they enlist the spirits of the dead to possess the very metal of these mascots? Or did they do something that actually makes sense if you think about it for more than two minutes? Today, we find out how the animatronics in the Five Nights at Freddy's movie actually work. That's a, whoo, whoo, that's gonna be a lot of words to fit on screen. Richard, have fun with that, and hit that intro. The animatronics for the FNAF movie were created by the folks over at the Jim Henson Creature Shop. Odds are you're at least familiar with the name at this point, but you've definitely seen way more of their work than you even realize. Everything from The Muppets to The Dark Crystal, Star Wars to The Hangover. If a movie's got some sort of puppet or non-CGI creature in it, chances are it came from Henson's. They've been revolutionizing the world of puppets and really practical effects in filmmaking for the better part of half a century. So while it may sound weird that the people who made Kermit the Frog were the ones chosen to bring Freddy and the gang to life, it really shouldn't come as a big surprise. Unfortunately, we've only gotten little bits and pieces of information on how they accomplished this effect. Uh, a Twitter post here, a behind the scenes picture there, so nobody outside of Henson's knows exactly how these animatronics work. But, while I may not work for the Jim Henson Creature Shop and have never seen these animatronics in person, though I wish I had, give me a call Henson's, you know where to find me, but I do work as a mechanical engineer. So with my knowledge of machines and mechanisms from these little bits and pieces of information, I can find the truth. I may not be good at unraveling the insane lore of these games like some other theorists, but this, this is my wheelhouse. For starters, the animatronics in this movie aren't actually animatronics, strictly speaking, at least not the kind that most people are familiar with. See, the animatronics that you might see in a Chuck E. Cheese, a Disney World, or a Great Wolf Lodge have pre-programmed animations. They pop out, they automatically do their thing, and then they pop back in and repeat. This is presumably how the animatronics in the world of FNAF would work, but that's not how the Henson props work. Instead, the animatronics that they used on set were effectively puppets. To grossly oversimplify, inside all these animatronics is a simple metal frame, an endoskeleton if you will. Any part of the endoskeleton that needs to move, like the joints, the face, is equipped with a simple servo motor. For those who don't know, a servo motor is designed to turn in precise increments as opposed to something like a direct drive motor which just spins continuously. These motors are connected wirelessly to this absolutely insane power glove looking thing that allows a puppeteer to control the animatronic in real time the same way they would an old school hand puppet. Sadly, I've never had a chance to use one of these things in person. Again, Jim Henson Creature Shop, I'm not hard to find. But from what I gather, controlling one of these animatronics is very complicated. 
Think about it. Every joint can move independently. You've got all the facial expressions, the eyes, the eyelids, the mouth. Uh, even if you had enough control with one of these hand things, it seems like it would be impossible to just keep track of everything. Well, according to the folks at the Henson Creature Shop, it is impossible. Even if you had both hands power gloved up, jacked into the freaking Matrix dude, uh, it would still take a whole team of people to control just one of these animatronics. According to interviews, Foxy was the most complicated of the four to pilot, requiring six people to fully operate. I'm guessing that's in part because Foxy has a lot of his endoskeleton exposed, so it's harder to hide bits that would make it easier to control with fewer people. So if you're ever feeling a little scared when Foxy's on screen, just remember, that it's basically just six gamers sitting barely off screen. And speaking of off screen, <coughs> look people, normally this is the part of the video where I come in and ask you to subscribe, but I've been thinking about it and surely, if you watch this channel regularly, if you've made it this far into the video without clicking off, if you enjoy the content I make, then surely you're already subscribed, right? I mean. Who doesn't subscribe to the channel that they enjoy? It's free, it only takes a second. Surely nobody would be so cavalier, so thoughtless, right? Right? That sounded way more threatening than I intended to. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, do whatever you want. We're chill either way, it's it's a button. You can click it, you can click it, I don't care. Uh, I've got a Patreon too, I've got a, there's some cool stuff in there. If you wanna go into the, the description, there's a link to it. Check it out, all right. I'm gonna head out. We cool? We cool? Sorry for threatening you. If these animatronics sound incredibly complicated, that's because they are. They're truly cutting edge. And remember, if the game's lore is to be believed, then William Afton apparently had access to this technology in the 80s, which... No! Even with modern day technology, it apparently took the team at the Henson Creature Shop 15 months to make all these animatronics, which simultaneously sounds really long and also insanely fast considering what they were able to accomplish because they didn't just make four animatronics. No, no, they made a crap ton. As advanced as these puppets are, they do have their limitations, namely, mobility. I don't care how many servo motors you cram in there and how many puppeteers you've got. You're not getting one of these things to walk around without falling over. I assume at least. I don't know. As far as I can tell, the Henson Creature Shop is just a bunch of wizards, so maybe they made it work. But no. Instead, there are two versions of each animatronic. Well, well, no, actually there's a lot more than two versions. They made three to four versions of every animatronic in varying states of decay and with different capabilities for specific shots in the movie, but there are two main flavors, let's say. There are the animatronic puppets that we've been talking about, which are great for any close-ups or scenes like this where the animatronics are stationary, but for any scene where they're on the move, they used a separate suit worn by a real person. These suit versions look nearly identical to the animatronic puppets, only instead of an endoskeleton inside, there's just a guy in there controlling all the movements. That's not to say that this is just your average mascot costume though. Obviously, whoever's inside can control the limbs and movement with just their own body, no machines required. But when it comes to the facial expressions, you can't really, I mean, I imagine it would be hard to puppet that with your face. So instead, the headpiece still has little motors to move the mouth and the eyes, controlled by another person off screen. So even these more simplified suits still require two people to operate, except this time, one person gets to sit around in a t-shirt using a dope controller, and the other person needs to be running around with a very heavy, and I would have to imagine, pretty loud helmet and a bulky suit that I can only guess is around as hot as the surface of the sun. 
in an ironic twist of art imitating life, trying to imitate art, which, which was parodying real life, sort of, this actually mirrors something that happened in the games, when Matthew Lillard's character, William Afton, needed a way to allow a person to wear his animatronics like a costume, so they could walk around and interact with the people at the restaurant after having performed on stage. Instead of making two separate versions, he opted to create a single springlock suit where the endoskeleton could be pulled back out of the way with super strong springs or fully removed, depending on who you ask, to allow a person to stand inside. William was also, evidently, a very dumb person because he did it in the most dangerous way possible and ended up accidentally murdering himself inside one of them. Mondays, am I right? The folks at the Jim Henson Creature Shop were presented with the exact same problem, though they opted for the much safer, cheaper, and all around better solution of just making two separate things, a suit and an animatronic. As someone who's dunked on the idea of the Springlock suit in FNAF many times, I can't tell you how many people I've seen trying to justify the idea of an animatronic suit hybrid, saying that it would be cheaper or somehow easier, and this is proof that no, no, the Springlock suit is not a good idea. Because if it was, the Jim Henson Creature Shop would have done that, but they didn't, because that would be dumb. VINDICATION! But with the knowledge that there are multiple different screen use versions of all these suits, I've devised a fun little game to completely diffuse the tension and remove all horror from this movie. I call it Suit or Robe Roboot. It sounded better in my head. Here's how the game works. Anytime you see an animatronic on screen, it might be a super advanced puppet, or it might be a very sweaty man. And it's your job to figure out which is which. Based on the trailer footage, the team at the Henson Creature Shop did a great job of making them look pretty indistinguishable, but there is one dead giveaway. If you look at the joints on the animatronic puppets, you can see the endoskeleton peeking through, true to the games. However, on the costume version, there is no endoskeleton, just this guy sweating his balls off. So if you look closely in certain shots, you can tell that the endoskeleton is a bit bulkier because it's just the guy in a black shirt, and that's how you'll know that it's the suit version. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I see that, my fear of these animatronics is gonna turn to pity real fast. Godspeed, my friend. Your sacrifice will not be forgotten. So, there you have it. That's how the animatronics from the Five Nights at Freddy's movie work in real life. Now, there's only one question remaining. The Five Nights at Freddy's series is all about the hubris of the man who created the animatronics, the horrors that arose because of them, and the agony of those souls trapped inside. And yet, in order to tell this cautionary tale, the people at Jim Henson Creature Shop needed to do the very thing they were cautioning against. So the question is, have they opened Pandora's box? Will they fall folly to the very villains they warned us about? Will they too be hunted down by the suits, possessed by the agony of those who perished, or in this case were mildly uncomfortable for an extended period of time, inside? Maybe Five Nights at Freddy's is nothing more than a cryptic fairy tale to scare children. Or maybe, just maybe, it's inevitable. Either way though, the suits probably smell just as bad. I mean, can you imagine? A massive thanks to everyone who chose to support me on Patreon, including Alakazam, Ethan Forlano, and Sherry and Mark. If I had to be locked in a haunted pizzeria for an entire work week, I'd want to be locked in there with you.